Ladies and gentlemen, every month we do a segment called Best Tweets. But we've been off for two months because they changed the name of tweets. According to New York Times, they are now called posts or perhaps zeets. I thought we'd be doing best threads, but Mark Zuckerberg is terrible at his job and that company is tanked. Let's see what's going on on Elon Musk's platform, starting with a tweet from the man himself. Remember Ice Cube? This is him now. Feel old yet. And it's Ice Cube in a puddle of water. A classic Elon Musk stolen meme Reddit joke. <laughs> but then, to prove why X.com or Twitter is better than boring ass threads, Ice Cube immediately responded with, remember Twitter, this is it now. Feel stupid yet. <laughs> and ratioed the richest man on the planet, which is funny and that's why nobody can leave this platform even though it keeps getting worse it's still funnier it's just so much funnier dude it's just a funnier place to be x.com just made a new feature where you can keep your likes private x keep spicy likes private by hiding your likes tab eyes emoji chili pepper emoji available to premium subscribers <laughs> this is an actual alert people got on their phone you could have told me this notifications from an adult entertainment app involved in trafficking and i would have believed you this is insanely bad branding. I just don't get it. The <laughs> This is actually one of my favorite tweets. The ability to rapidly deploy a fast food restaurant to any location on the globe remains one of the USA's most vital combat capabilities. And we've got military planes loading a deployment Burger King that can be unloaded right at the front. <laughs> Look how happy the soldiers are, dude. Also, amazing teeth. This is my favorite fucking video of all time. It's truly the transportation of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, the iPhone. The... <laughs> Nothing else. That's the one big innovation. The wheel. Fire the wheel, the iPhone, and now this. It's going to change transportation forever. It's like a gigantic suspended mega bus on six pillars that can go above our crowded streets. It can go under bridges. <laughs> and then this, this fucking part is so insane. There's just no way that's gonna work, bro. Like if one of those things goes down wrong, it crushes and kills a family. It's like America will do literally anything other than invent a train. <laughs> oh, wait, does anyone have this? This was a clip of Dream and George Not Found doing a live rap performance on stage. Does anyone have this? Where am I? I'm with your girlfriend in the car. Turn it up! Sorry, everyone who's at an event right now, please ask politely but forcefully to pass the aux. <laughs> All right, well, that is good. Don't get me wrong, I just don't want to get DMCA struck. Oh, this was sick. The game dev tweet of all time. Fuck it, you can parry nukes now. Sick as hell. <laughs> Tory Lanez is officially headed to prison, and his lawyer Jose Baez didn't appear today in court. Sending my guy much love today. Even though I can't be there due to a prior commitment, I'm praying for you. At Tory Lanez, hashtag free Tory Lanez, and a shirt with free Tory on it. Lawyer sending prayers is crazy. <laughs> That's already too little if it's your family member. They couldn't make it to your fucking hearing, but your lawyer doing it? <laughs> What's this? His lawyer really said, We got good and bad news. Good news, we got your payment, buddy. Bad news, uh, they gave you life. <laughs> Sayonara. <laughs> we got good. <laughs> Ozymandias, the best episode of Breaking Bad, was released 10 years ago today. It's the only episode in TV history to hold a 10 out of 10 on IMDb. Maybe hot take? My favorite episode of Breaking Bad is Crawl Space. The one where he laughs like the Joker at the end and there's no money. <laughs> I think that's the best episode. And I think this is a second or third. I was watching like one Breaking Bad episode a night. Like I, I didn't see it when it first was live. I watched it on Netflix a few years later and I was watching one a night. And then when that episode happened, I binged the whole rest of the show. That one like got me fucking hooked. That got me, once that happened, I was like, oh, I'm in, I'm, look, I'm locked in. Parkour runner misses his jump and falls off a high rise rooftop. Ugh, ugh. 
Sheesh! <laughs> what a fucking dumb hobby! Oh! Oh, God, dude! What a dumb hobby! Giga Chad, though. <laughs> oh, shit! It loops, but imagine he was just going again. What exactly happened? Let's see. No, there's like a wire. Wait, oh my god, there's a wire. There's a fucking wire right here. Oh my god, dude. I think that's why he fell though, right? Yeah, wow. That's crazy. I mean, I could do it too, but I don't feel like it. This guy's not getting invited back to the World Economic Forum. 1,500 private yets have flown in here to hear. Sir Bro, I know he's saying something important, but he called jets yets. <laughs> private yets. Bro, what are you talking about? What are you waffling about? How can we listen to you? They should roast him. That's, really, that's why these rich fucking economic forums need to invite me, okay? Because I'll harass the riffraff who are complaining about the wealth equality gap. I've flown in here to hear Sir David Attenborough speak about, you know, how we're wrecking the planet. And uh, I mean, I hear people talk in the language of participation and justice and equality and transparency. But then, I mean, almost no one raises the real issue of tax avoidance, right? And of the rich just not paying their fair share. I mean, it feels like I'm at a firefighters fighters conference and no one's allowed to speak about water. <laughs> I mean, this is not rocket science. I mean, we can talk for a very long time about all these stupid <laughs> philanthropy schemes. We can divide Bono once more. <laughs> Come on, it's, we gotta be talking about taxes. Yeah, That's it, taxes, taxes, taxes. All the rest is bullshit, in, in my opinion. Damn. And if he just didn't say yet, we would all be saved right now. We could be getting rich people to pay more, but he goofed it. He said yet. <laughs> and now we're, we're gonna lower taxes on the rich once more. Obsessed with my friend's announcement to the group chat that he is now actively pursuing TikTok fame. Hi everyone, I am actively pursuing TikTok fame. So expect an increase in posts. If you see them on your For You page, please boost engagement with likes, comments, and saves. And follow me at Tyler is Jung. Remember team, if I get famous, we all get famous. That means free clothes, swag, exclusive reservations, etc. Let's do <laughs> You know what's funny is like, this got 92,000 likes. This probably helped him get somewhat famous. Check his page. Let's see. Okay, he's only got 1,500 followers, so it didn't transfer that much. He responded. But that means he sent the text unironically, which is terrible. <laughs> what did he say before this? I pay attention to things that most people ignore. I pay attention to things that most people ignore. <laughs> that was... Th <laughs> First of all, you just fucked up my For You page because I watched that twice. Secondly, if that's the beginning, you just sent the text, right? This is where the text is. So that means that's the beginning of your full-time TikToks? He's got it. He's got a big, he's got a future. Hey, I'm watching it right now. Everyone follow Tyler is young. He's going to make it. I believe in him. So let's just get out of the way. This is the, this is like a midpoint. All right, let's just take it out. Let's get it out of the way. Here's a video called Entering Glizzy Overdrive. I've never seen it because nobody's ever tagged me in it. 100 Glizzies Entering Glizzy Overdrive. <laughs> Grit by 7%. <laughs> we are locked in. Thank you for over 160 glizzies and doing glizzy overtime. <laughs> okay. And now we've seen it. Now we've seen the entering glizzy overdrive guy. Never saw that before, but that was entertaining. I don't see any relevance to this channel or this stream or me or anything like that, but it was funny, I guess. He truly has a comical way of living that is making him money. You know, it's, I don't get it, but it's for him. As you know, 9-11 on Twitter is not an opportunity to reflect and remember on a terrible tragedy. It's an opportunity to make amazing 9-11 jokes, I guess. <laughs> Twitter goes crazy. I mean, x.com goes crazy on 9-11. It's like a holiday. Bill Elmore. I was booked on United Flight 93 on 9-11, flying nonstop from Newark to San Francisco. Around midnight the night before, a coworker called me and urged me to change my flight and fly into San Jose instead. This meant I had to give up my first class seat and move to a flight 
a different flight, I guess. The reason my coworker told me to change my flight was she took the same flight and the commute would make me late for my meeting, whereas traveling from San Jose to Mountain View would be faster. She saved your life with advice, which you followed. Whatever happened to your coworker? Sad to say, I ultimately had to fire her for poor, for poor performance. <laughs> it was difficult. <laughs> Bro, that is psychotic. That is psychotic. That is psychotic. You couldn't waterboard that out me. I don't know how poor the performance has to be for you to fire the person that literally saved your life on 9-11. But let's just say she was fucking shitting on the desk and it was absolutely terrible. To have to admit that in public is crazy. I can't believe this. The lesson here is to listen to your intuition and let your boss die in a historic terrorist attack. <laughs> Nah, bro. This bowling animation is crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that actually is good. <laughs> That's actually really funny. <laughs> the fact that it didn't crash made it way funnier to me. Zoomers will never know how truly stupid everything got. I remember this exact thing. What's funny is because my dad worked for this guy. Not this guy, the guy they're going to show. Donald Rumsfeld. My dad worked for him. There was constant discussion about him hiding out in caves. And I think many times the American people have a perception that it's a little hole dug out of a side of a mountain. Oh, no. This is it. This is a fortress, yes. a complex, multi-tiered, bedrooms and offices on the top, as you can see. This diagram went viral. It was like in uh, uh, Time Magazine or something. And Donna Rumsfeld is the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff or whatever, is on TV right now explaining it. This was 100% made up. This is 100% source. I made it the fuck up. They did not find him in a super deep fucking super cave. None of these ever existed. <laughs> Secret exits on the side and, the end, and on the bottom. <laughs> Cut deep to avoid thermal detection. A ventilation system to allow people to breathe and to carry on. The entrance is large enough to drive trucks and even tanks. It's a very sophisticated operation. Oh, you bet. This is serious business. And, and there's not one of those. There are many of those. <laughs> there was none! There was zero! He was in a house! He was in a compound, bro! Yeah, he was in a house watching anime. <laughs> But I remember, I believe this. I saw this as a kid. This was like literally in fucking Time Magazine. And I thought, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> Enough about America's problems. Let's talk about another trend on Twitter this past month, which was Europe versus America. Now, usually we're allies, but sometimes tensions flare up. They have problems with us. We got problems with them. And we get into little heated Twitter zeets wars between America and Europe. It started, I believe, with this. The European mind cannot comprehend this. And it's a simple glass of water with ice, which as somebody who's lived in Europe is actually fucking true. No restaurant will give you a simple glass of water with ice. You have to pay way fucking extra for sparkling. They look at you weird if you ask for still, which is just regular water. They'll never give you ice and the cups are fucking small. The bottles are small, the cups are small. You can never just get a nice glass of water to quench your thirst. It's fucking, it's crazy. This is a direct hit, bullseye hit on Europe right now. This is one of your biggest weaknesses as a continent, but they fired back. The American mind cannot comprehend this. And it's like a livable, walkable city. <laughs> Okay, they fired back. Everyone's living in a nice, beautiful looking city that can walk. They have a nice market, open square. I don't notice a single Walmart. I don't even notice a McDonald's. Maybe there's a McDonald's hidden in there. There's no gas stations. I mean, it feels like it's missing a lot of like what makes a great city. But anyway, America's response was simple. If they can't comprehend this. Yes, I can. It looks round like burger. <laughs> Which is true. And when you put it that way, I kind of do get it. Like I do, I can I can actually fit it into my, my brain cells now. Like that actually tracks. And so then the number of McDonald's restaurants per country. And it turns out USA is number one. <laughs> yet again, baby. And it's by a mile. 13,550 McDonald's. China is number two at 3,500. Finally, they're getting some culture. I mean, France is the biggest European McDonald's. And they only have 1,500. That's crazy. There's European countries that are like third world, dude. Sweden has only 191 McDonald's. And no wonder Lincoln's had to leave. So anyway, that happened. But then the Europeans fought back with this video called A Day in the Life of an American. <laughs> I wake up so excited for another day of working. After singing the national anthem, I make my amazing American coffee. <laughs> 
so much better than espresso. <laughs> I'm looking for breakfast, but there are no cold pizza, so I have to skip. Oh, where's this? An apple? So cute. I'm so lucky because I have only one hour and 45 minutes to drive to work. Time for lunch. I only have five minutes, so I order fast food and I eat at my desk. Mmm. After a short 14 hours, it's dark, so I take my work home. Good night, my love. See you tomorrow. Bye, and we fuck. wouldn't have it any other way! You fuck! You fucking Euro poor dude! We wouldn't change a thing! The only thing I changed is to add more hours working! Also, there wasn't one gun in there, so you didn't even get it right. Anyway, we'll call it a draw. We'll call it a draw, Europe. Relax. Ease up. Jeez. The Mexican alien is actually cake. Dude, I saw this. Ah, I didn't see the cake part. But I do want to say, like, how did anyone fall for this? I'm not so naive as to think there probably isn't in the entire galaxy another life form, okay? But the fact that you thought that Mexico found real aliens and they were this... <laughs> buying this you think this is the breakthrough you know i see people still defending it there's people on reddit and on twitter that are still like wait a minute i know that it's been like publicly proven to be fake but look between the lines you fell for 9 11 yeah i did i fell for it <laughs> Uh, I thought it was real. I thought those towers really fell. Totally random, but the 23-year-old Mexican rapper Dancer surgically implanted gold chains in his head to serve as his hair. And I was thinking, I wanted to ask, what would someone have to pay you to do this? That's what I really want to know. And you have to keep it like this for the rest of your life. What is an honest number? Zero, this goes hard. <laughs> I feel like this can only work if you're a 23 year old rapper, but this doesn't work when you're like going to the bank at 45. <laughs> Unironically a billion, you're crazy. You're bullshitting me. So if I offer you $999 million to do this, you say no, you say nah. <laughs> I don't know what it would take for me to do this. It would be so bad. It's all anyone around you is ever gonna talk about forever. And it's gonna be so loud and you're gonna try to sleep on it. And I don't know. Here's what I would do, right? You could probably like tuck it up and then wear a chef's hat like Ratatouille. And then I'll be known as the chef. That would be a good solution to your baldness. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. That was best tweets, best zeets of the month. We'll be back more as long as Elon Musk doesn't kill the site completely. Pray.